to me this song is a prayer. Count your blessings. Counting your blessings to me is being thankful. Is being thankful to God for every day. I'm thankful that I'm standing here. Many people who were here last year at this time, they're not standing today. I'm thankful and blessed God for listening to me. I thank God for my husband. I thank God for my daughter. I thank God for my son, even though he's hitting on the right road that he should be right now. I'm thankful that he's still here and he has one more day to try to get on the right road. I'm thankful for a young lady who came into my life when she was 10 years old and she gave me a grandson named Easy. I'm so thankful that God allowed that baby to be in our lives. I'm thankful for this church family. Where would I be without this church family? This church has my blood family in it, and it has my family from God in it. And I'm so thankful that I can come through this door every Sunday, every day if I choose to, to come through this door. I'm thankful for the pastor. I'm thankful that God sent us someone who will listen to him, and he also listens to us. I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for his wife. I'm thankful that God works for, walks with me every day. Every day. When today, the pastor asks for testimony, everybody should be jumping up Amen. and thanking Amen. and blessing God for something that he has given us. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything you have done for us, everything you're going to do for us, everything you've already done for us that we don't even know, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you pour down on us each and every day. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with this country, to be with this nation, to be with this world, dear Heavenly Father, because we don't appreciate the blessings that you're giving each and every one of us. Dear Heavenly Father, be with those people in the hospital, those people in jail, those people on the streets. Let them know that there's still blessings for them out there, and you're raining them down also on them. Dear Heavenly Father, be with each and every one of us through the rest of the day. In Jesus' name and for us, say amen. 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 And may each and every one of you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you.
two-way, man. God is good. Is there anyone else? Amen. listings. 
We believe that you may make an interesting biological subject, as individual achievement is what Marquise Food School is all about. Your final confirmation, excuse me, upon final confirmation, you will be listed among over 1.5 million accomplished individuals in the Marquise Food School Registry. The biographical data presented in Who's Who in America comes from the most authoritative sources available, the, bio, the biographies themselves. <coughs> Inclusion in a Marquis Who's Who publication acts as an endorsement of your credentials and can significantly enhance <coughs> your online credibility and visibility. We look forward to your appearance in this upcoming edition. Best wishes for continued success. Sincerely, John Sororitas, Director of Publications. There's no cost to be included in this, but this is an honor, not Amen. only to our guests, Announcement from the Appalachian Ministries of the Smokies. We're having our coach for the cold for children and adults. And a lot of the items needed are hats, gloves, scarves, blankets, coats, you know, for children and adults. And, and our, our last day for, collect, well, you can still come in, but we try to have a cutoff of November the 30th. And our event is going to be on December the 7th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 511 Municipal Drive, which is right up the hill here on the corner. And, and it's welcome to um, uh, families from Jefferson, Granger, and Cock counties. And also, again, I'd like to, as Michelle alluded to, we're having the, the Jefferson City Ministerial Association, we're having a community Thanksgiving worship service. 
and we invite all to come out. Um, and Martha Davis, uh, as it was stated, the Martha Davis Choir will be singing, as well as our very own Reverend John Jones will be bringing the message this evening. And uh, we, we talk about bringing canned foods as a supplement for Amos, which is short for Appalachian Ministries of the Smokies. And they will be taking, like I said, love offerings for Habitat for Humanity as well as for Amos this evening. So if you could come on out, we would really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, last week, Michelle mentioned that she read the announcement where um, they're taking up money and donations for people that are needy in the Jefferson County area. Um, our church normally gives a donation as a whole. So if you want to donate that way, you don't want to send a donation yourself, just put on your envelope that you um, want this part of that, that donation to go to that ministry that we do. And we'll be taking that up through um, about the first, second week of December. Thank you. Church members, we need to have a brief discussion. It won't take long. Secondly, uh, as we embark for our last business meeting of the year, I would like for each auxiliary to be thinking about your officers as we put things together in the budget. Amen. Let us take a Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you for giving us another chance and another choice to do right by you, Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless everyone that has the opportunity to give, but bless the ones that couldn't give, Lord God. Let this money go to, the, to your house, dear Lord God. Let it be uplifting, Lord God. Do all the things that we need to do, Lord God. Bless the speaker of the hour, Heavenly Father. I ask that you bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Without you, we are nothing, but with you, we are everything. And you said the highest praise that one can give unto you is to say hallelujah, dear Lord God. So hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden, as if they could hide from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard the voice in the garden, uh, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou hadst was naked? How hast thou eaten of the tree world that I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me to be with, she gave me the tree of the tree, and I did eat. Here goes the blame game. <laughs> and the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled to me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above all every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat of the, all the days of thy life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Listen, church, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I stopped right there this morning, and I want to talk to somebody and tell you, that the lack of communication will cause you trouble. Amen. Amen. Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I cannot teach, cannot preach, save the unction of the Holy Ghost be with me. Father, I'm asking that you would move me out of the way right now and hide me behind that old rugged cross, that it is your glory that must be revealed. Father, I ask that you bless this congregation, give them yes. ears to hear, a heart to receive, and if there's one, don't know your son, bring him, saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Father, please hold me in your hands. I must Thank decrease that you increase. Word of my lips and all of my steps. Now be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 According to the Apostle Peter, when he wrote his letter to the church in 1 Peter 5 8, he says that we should, he gives us this advice. He says, be sober and be vigilant. There's a reason why we were to ask people, why should we be sober and vigilant? He says, because your adversary, uh, the devil, who names him, the adversary that we face and fight against, the devil, he has a job to do. As a roaring lion, he is walking about seeking who he may devour. This devil that he speaks of, he's talking about a roaring lion. He likes to make a lot of noise. He likes to cause a lot of distraction. He likes to cause a lot of confusion. He don't worry so much about the world standard, amen, because those in the world are already walking and talking with him, so he's not paying much attention to them. He's concerned more about those of you who just got up this morning and gave the Lord your best hallelujah. He's concerned about those of us, amen, who lifted our hands up and stomped our feet and told somebody about how good our God is. That means the devil is really, is really more than mess with, amen. The devil wants to confuse us, wants to destroy us, wants to pull us away from our families, pull us away from our jobs, pull us away from our homes. What the devil wants to do is leave us with nothing, amen. And when he has us with nothing on that island to ourselves, he surely wants us to die. He did not come to play footsie with us, amen. He did not get in your liquor bottle to make you feel like you were smoother than you ever was. He did not get in your weed, amen, to make you feel like you needed higher than you need to get. He did not even get in your pocket, but when you got a little money in your back pocket to make you feel like you're better than somebody else. What he wants to do is kill, steal, and destroy your soul and keep you from the promises of God, amen. But you know that we serve a God, amen, can take a little bit of nothing and make a whole lot of something out of it. Quickest. You don't have to be anything that the world stands said, but God can lift you up right in the presence Amen. of God. You don't even have to be born on the right side of town, young folks. Amen. God can take you from the projects and put you in the pen. God can do anything that he wants to, but well, it does not matter even if you had a little sippy sip. Amen. He can take that sippy sip and make a deacon out of you. He was a praise leader himself, and he wanted to be like the Most High. 
And that was his downfall. And when he got kicked out, he even had the whole <coughs> third, two thirds go with him. Y'all with me? That's amazing if you see these type of things happening. But the devil has an assignment, and what he does not have to happen. If you look in here this morning, and this is how a church should look on Sunday morning. Right. You've got to help me, like, man, you don't have enough elbow room, amen. Right. So if you don't want to look like this, somebody, amen. Right. You might need to tell somebody, give me this a little crack, and I'm getting ready to take off. Uh -huh. <laughs> the devil's not excited about that. That was not excited that you just got a promotion, amen. That you that you just got a new home, that you just got married, that you just, yeah. just had a brand new baby, that you got a grandbaby. The devil was not excited about that. Yeah. Uh, what moves the devil is when you come in here, amen, and you act like you love your God, amen, who woke you up this morning, and when you leave those doors, you act like the rest of everybody else. Y'all yeah. right with what I'm saying? I need mean, somebody to help me, amen. I'm going to go to the other side of those doors, amen. And I didn't know to understand what it felt like to be in here, amen. I used to think that the church was full of hypocrites and scared folk. I didn't realize that somebody needed to run in here because I was scared myself. And when the Lord allowed me to come in, oh, what a change he brought in my life. Yeah. Yeah. The devil likes to make a lot of noise. The devil likes to make a lot of noise and he wants to distract us because God has given us promises. And what we have to understand, brothers and sisters, is the world will come to you in any kind of way. Yeah. The world will come with you and they try to attack our young people these days and try to get them distracted. They got everything at the tips of their fingers right. and with their eyes right. sighted, man. Right. All they have to do is go on. If you can spell it, you don't even have to spell it. Just hit two or three letters and you can click it up and it comes on. Amen. Amen. You all right what I'm saying? They, 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 they mess with us because the devil knows he comes with us two ways. The lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yes. And he gets inside of us those three ways. He doesn't have any new tricks. He's just doing it the same old way with different schemes, amen. amen. And the schemes that are happening with us, amen, and these days and times, social media and the, and, and, the, and the internet and all these things are good tools, amen, but sometimes they can be used the wrong way. Yeah. And our young people get a hold of these things, and what happens is what my mother used to tell me, you're growing up too fast. <laughs> Yeah. Since what we do is we get young people in a grown folk situation that they can't get themselves out of. Yeah. But some of these grown folk need to tell these young folk how they got old. Yeah. This, this, this roaring, this, this, this roaring lion. You know, there's a lion that's making noise. I can tell you about a lion in episode of I'll talk about it later. But, 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 but this lion is roaring. Making noise, and y'all know that's where we came from. Not everybody, but some of you came like I came, man. man. We like to make a lot of noise on, on Friday night. Amen. 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 Things happen. 
And when the Lord seen that, 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 that Adam was doing this work, he realized something, that this work he had signed him up to was a hard work. He realized not only was it a hard work, but it was a lonely work. And he said, I can't have you doing this work for, by yourself. It is good for you to have someone because it's not good for you to be alone. Well, so I'm going to give you something to help me to help make things better for you. And then the first birth, did y'all know the first birth biblically standing we ever had? It was when, when Eve was born out of the root. Y'all come on. Yeah. Oh, right. so, that's the first birth we ever had. Amen. I don't know what they're teaching me in biology, nevertheless, but what did my Bible say? When he laid it down one night, amen, he plucked out and said, woman, man with womb. Y'all all right what I'm saying? So now all of a sudden they're walking together. He says, I need y'all to do some things. I need you to be fruitful. I need you to multiply. I need you to subdue the earth and replenish the land. If you would just do that and walk with me every day and everything's going to be all right. Now, get this picture when you're walking there, man, and they're walking with each other. And the Lord is telling them all you got to do. He said, when you see a bird, call it a bird. When you see a dog, call it a dog. When you see cattle, call it cattle. When you see the sea, call it the ocean. When you see the sky and the star, call them that. Whatever you do, call them. I'm giving you that ability. See, do you see the power that God gave them? Adam and Eve, do you see the power that God had bestowed upon them? But the Bible said that one of the animals that he had created was roaming in the fields, in the garden. Now, I don't know about you, but if you look at Genesis chapter 2, between Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3, I see no communication between the man and the woman. That's what I want to pause this morning and get you to thinking about. Because between that, he gave them conversation. He said, man, woman, please, whatever you do, do these things, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, name these things, call these things as they should be, amen. But what I need you to do is be in fellowship with me. But I don't realize that and I didn't hear in Genesis, between Genesis 2 and 3, where they were communicating with one another. See, what you should do when you're in a family, amen, is you should wake up in the morning and hit your wife on the side and say, baby, do you know this is another day that the Lord has made up? You all right with me, amen, I'm all right with you, amen. We woke up, we're breathing, whatever happened. Has he uh, 
said that you can eat of any tree in the garden. No. What about the one of good and evil? Uh, he said that we can't eat nor touch. Oh, we will surely die. Mm -hmm. And she took the scripture out of the text, the command out of the text, because all he said was, whatever you can do, you can eat of all the trees in the garden. But do not eat of that tree That's right. of good and evil. Because right. if you eat of that tree of good and evil, it will make you wise. Mm -hmm. So the woman now is in a conversation with the devil and she has been twisted up because now she's misquoting what God has told her to do. He never said anything about touching. He just said eating. Now the devil's got her entertained. Now see what y'all looking at me real funny. Is, this is how the world works against us. What we do, amen, somebody, again, the devil's not going to slither in on the snake. You're not going to see anybody say, hi, I'm the devil. He's coming to sit with somebody that let you like to talk to. Him. It's going to be on that phone. Let you see somebody come on. It's going to be a sudden start. It's going to be somebody
conversation the lack of communication between Adam and Eve were. I don't know where it was. I don't know where it went wrong. I don't know what happened between Genesis 2 and 3. That's the mystery that I will not be able to describe to you. But I don't see any communication. But y'all see the communication that's happening in the garden. Have you heard any communication between Adam and Eve yet? Y'all don't, don't need to answer that. I'll be ready to tell you. Because the Bible says, as after they two, these two uh, had this conversation, the serpent and the woman, she ate. So in other words, she fell subject to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Uh -huh. She ate the fruit. Well, Amen. She ate from the tree. She ate from that tree. She disobeyed God. And now all of a sudden we hear about the man entering the scene. And the Bible says nothing. He never said a word. All he did was eat. <laughs> Y'all gonna get mad at me this morning. And see, you gotta understand something. God called us to walk in the front me. God called yeah. us to take care of things. Yeah. God called us to say, honey, we gotta go this way, not that way. Because as soon as Adam and Eve start taking their eyes off God, the sin did creep in. When a man takes his post, they can't say, for God I live and for God I'm going to die. When a man takes his post and says, oh, you can't have my family devil. When a man says, I'm going to get up Sunday morning and go to the house of God, honey, even if you don't want to go, I'm going to praise the Lord in hell. God has been too good to me. When you sit in your rightful place, say, man, we just walk it like we told it. Y'all right with what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said that all of a sudden, and I know y'all mad at me this morning, but this is the truth. The Bible said all of a sudden now what had happened was she gave them her husband, Adam, and he did eat. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to shout in a minute, I know. <laughs> now all of a sudden, there is a problem. God, when they did eat, they realized that they were naked. Mm -hmm. They were hidden from all the white vices and tricks of the enemy. But when they ate of that fruit, it contaminated their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, when it contaminated that relationship with God, now they have a big problem. Remember, I told you the lack of communication will cause a problem. Had they communicated with God first and walked together with God, I mean, everything would have been all right. But I'm so glad that's not how the story ends. Because we wouldn't be sitting here if they did not have that problem. Y'all going to be all right in a minute. Now the Bible says all of a sudden when he says, Adam, where art thou? He did not call Eve's name. He did not call the serpent's name. He called the one that he created first and put in charge and said, I put you over rule over this. Where are thou? Why are you hiding from me? Mm -hmm. First mistake we want to do as people is we want to try to hide things mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. yes. You can trick me all day long. Yes. But you can't trick the author sure. and the finisher yeah. of our faith. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell me the lies and the same way all day long. Yeah. But we can't lie to the one who took the tongue in our mouth. Y'all gonna help me here in a minute. He said, I was hiding God. Like God didn't know you were hiding. <laughs> I was hiding God. Why were you hiding? Because we found out that we were naked. Wow. Why? Wow. How did you find out you were naked? Well, here goes the blame, man. Yeah. He said, here's the way it went down. We were walking like you said, walking. No, you wouldn't, because you wouldn't walk with your wife. Your wife is walking with Satan.
Did you stop and have a Bible study every now and then? Yeah. Did you stop and just pray and pray with me every now and then? Yeah. Would you do anything? No, you just went out there because I gave you some power, amen. Uh -huh. I gave you some ability and you started using it the wrong way. I know y'all yeah. not going to shout with me this morning. Uh -huh. We just didn't use up, amen. All of a sudden, here comes the snake slithering in, not even making any kind of noise, amen. Because he knows he can set the device right there so you can make the noise. Uh -huh. Think about it. He crept in the garden and had a conversation. And from that conversation, all oh, Hades broke loose. Because now he messed around and got deceived. Yeah. And when she got deceived, she did eat. The Bible said all oh, Adam did was take it from her and eat too. Now God's upset. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Come on. We're going home, I promise. The Bible says that when God got upset, he began to challenge them. Mm -hmm. Woman, what have you done? The woman says, I'm going to take a page out of Adam's book. I'm going to blame that serpent that crept in. <laughs> he made me do it. God said, Adam, this is a bad situation. He said, what I'm going to do, and I'm getting ready to go home. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put enmity between you. That means you guys will never get along. See, this serpent is going to have a seed. Y'all yeah. right what I'm saying? All right. And this woman is going to have a seed. Uh -huh. And these two seeds will never be able to get along. But there's going to be a victory for those of you like me that mess up a little bit. All right. But see, if I were Adam, I'd probably have done it the same way. Yeah. But see, you got to understand something. Uh -huh. When you get into trouble, hey amen, you're looking for a way of escape. Yeah. The Bible said that now I put enemy between. Uh -huh. And what's going to happen is there will never be any good to come out of this situation. There's always going to be a war. Yeah, yeah. The serpent's going to have a seed, and Eve's going to have a seed. Yeah. And her seed and your seed will never get along. Mm. As a matter of fact, her seed, hey amen, one seed is going to bruise the heel. And the other seed going to bruise the head. Oh, yeah. Y'all going to hear what I'm about to tell you. See, it happened over in the Garden of Eden, amen. But over in the Garden of Gethsemane, I had somebody that was praying, and he said, I need to pray, amen. He prayed to his sweat and came to blood. They call that he more high Joseph, amen. He said, he kept on praying an ugly prayer, amen. He said, Father, I don't want to go all the way. As a matter of fact, if you just take this cup from me,
I am being blessed. Excited to see all the beautiful faces in the house. My prayer is as we walk in this place every week, that we celebrate our families more than we ever have. Praise give God that we give us this family. Thank God for my family. Amen. 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 I thank God that you thank God for your families as well. Amen. 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 As, as, I, as we go home, I often think about my life and I think about who I am and I think about how I got here. And I know it was the Lord on my side. Amen. Come on, man. I know it was the Lord on my side. From birth to here, I know God has been on my side. Amen. And I know He's on your side just as well. He had God who will pull the living testimonies in His house. But it's time for us to start telling everybody about the real God. Something. We'll go home. We got another watch at seven o'clock. Seven p.m. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. And to the ladies who came in this morning, please just pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little unorthodox. Thank you, Lord. Good God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thanksgiving is a day that should be every day. Because we have a million things to thank you for. Yes. Father, I thank you for everyone on your side. Thank you. How beautiful it is to see the church full of glowing faces. I'm praying, Father God, for everyone under the sound of my voice. You know exactly where it is. Each and every one of us need. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that you meet us, Father God. And Father, I ask as we leave this place but not your presence, that you would go with us, rest the woman in the body and us. Father, when we go to our second watch, please saturate that place before we get there. And we just ask that you can walk according to the steps you've called us to. In these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Also, there will be no Bible study on Wednesday night, so go home and get some grandma's for being a dream.